Le développement capitaliste a, d'un côté, première chose, envahi la société, transformé la société dans un ensemble unitaire, formellement unitaire. En deuxième lieu, laisser un discours extrêmement pessimiste sur la possibilité de modifier cette situation. En troisième lieu, la perception de que quelque chose comme une utopie, une limite, un espoir extrême peut renverser tout. Une lecture pessimiste de cette possibilité. Le deuxième pessimiste et le deuxième et le troisième euh, ensemble. Quelque chose qui peut... Ah, comme, 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 comme le dernier. <laughs> ok. Et une autre, c'est la caractérisation de l'argument de ce livre. See, then you don't have to read it. You get the, uh, the <laughs> stuff notes. So, the, I, on, on the one hand, uh, the interpreting the extent to which capital has invaded all of society and created of, of, of social relations a unitary set, ensemble. Uh, la communication, l'antisémitisme, etc. Uh -huh. and, uh, fit, fit, fitting within this uh, anti-Semitism communication, like I said, the culture industry is central for them too. They're, they're in Los Angeles at the time. Um, so the, the, this is, I think this is partly an example from what Kathy was asking too of, of, of an interpretation of, of the ways in which society has been subsumed within capital. Even the culture industry is, is now part of capital, etc. cetera. Um, the second point of the book is a, a, an extremely pessimistic reading of the possibility of uh, overturning this situation and specifically pessimistic about the possibility of worker power and worker subjectivity in, in transforming this situation. And the third, I, I understand it's sort of a quasi-utopian <coughs> hope that could be, that, that, that is there, is the only thing that, that, that can save us, something like that. Say, au même temps, mm -hmm. un jugement extrêmement négatif sur ce qui s'est passé mm -hmm. et un espoir presque holderlinien d'une possibilité d'ouverture, d'une utopie qui explose so, quelque part. So, on the one hand, it's an extremely pessimistic reading of what has passed and what the possibilities are. On the other hand, a holderlin-like hope of 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 Uh, extreme danger. Of, of the extreme danger, like out of extreme danger could, 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 could come up, <coughs> an undefined hope. Donc, euh, ce bouquin, c'est extrêmement important parce qu'en réalité, il préfigure ce qui est la situation dans les années 60. In some ways, it's, it's, a, it's a book published in 1948. And in some ways, it uh, prefigures or, or, or foresees the situation up until the 1960s. Mais à ça s'ajoute une autre chose qui est très importante, c'est-à-dire ces deux chaînes de lutte ouvrière énormes à partir après 1956 qui ont des degrés d'autonomie extrêmement hauts, des luttes qui couronnent 68 pas seulement comme un phénomène culturel mais comme un phénomène euh, rouge, <rire> comme quelque chose qui euh, caractérise euh, le, la révolution 68, pas seulement comme une révolution culturelle, mais comme une révolution sociale. One of the things they don't foresee uh, is the um, uh, explosion of workers' struggles starting in 1956 that had great characteristics of autonomy of the workers, The uh, struggles that were in some ways crowned, like come to a, come to a, a, a kind of point of realization in 1968, and which forced an interpretation of 1968 not just as a cultural phenomenon, but as a red phenomenon, as a as a as a worker phenomenon. Um, this this is something that in, in some ways is outside of the vision of of the dialectic of enlightenment yeah. or Cameron. Et je crois que ça, c'est un moment extrêmement, extrêmement important qui continue. Ça commence avec les grands mouvements aux États-Unis dans les années 60, 
Et après, on a le phénomène qui arrive jusqu'aux années 70, clairement, dans, un peu dans toute l'Europe, avec les points qui sont le 68 français et le 77 italien. So this is, in, in some ways, this uh, wave of struggles, um, one might say that they started in the United States with worker struggles in their early 1960s, but they moved through what you might think of as May 68 in France, leading <coughs> up, uh, all the way up to the, the great conflicts, worker conflicts, social conflicts of 1977 in Italy. Ce sont des luttes tout à fait dans la subsumption réelle. These are struggles that fit within the real subsumption. C'est-à-dire, ce sont des luttes qui s'expandent des ouvriers aux étudiants, mm -hmm. des étudiantes au mouvement féministe, mm -hmm. des, au mouvement des femmes au mouvement anticolonial, mm -hmm. un mouvement de libération des populations de couleurs, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Touche tous les éléments qui sont justement cette dualisme fondamental, exerce et montre ce dualisme fondamental de la société, de la société contemporaine. So these, these become struggles that are not just worker struggles, but, but form, a kind of, um, form a kind of chain among um, worker struggles, student struggles, feminist struggles, anti-colonial struggles, struggles of people of color, that, that in the context of the real subsumption of society within capital, um, Yeah, that, that, that becomes in some ways the adequate form of antagonism that is no longer just workers against capital, but an entire social field against capital. Sont de l'autre qui confirme la généralisation subsumante mm -hmm. du capitalisme qui était prévue par la dialectique de l'Ofclerong d'Adorno, mais montre comme justement même la subsumption réelle est une subsumption Dualiste. So they, these are struggles that in some ways confirm the analysis of work I'm Adorno in, in, in the dialectic enlightenment in, in, in the sense that they are directed at and reveal a really subsumed society within capital or the subsuming force of capital. They're, they're in some ways confirming work I'm Adorno's analysis um, and confirming the dual nature Of, uh, of this real subsumption. The dual nature meaning, what Tony was saying at the beginning, this is the way I'm understanding it, that power is never one thing. Power is always a relation. And if you see it from below, you see it from the perspective of, of resistance. Et ça, c'est la chose qui est une chose absolument, tellement fondamentale, tellement dure, ce passage, que, on dit, l'élite du capitalisme mondial, non Et qui a la cause pour la trilatérale, non euh, 73, euh, dans un document qui est resté un document absolument fondamental, <coughs> écrit on ne peut plus résister à ce cette, à cette développement de lutte. On ne peut pas faire dépendre notre politique capitaliste de ce que les étudiants, les ouvriers, les femmes, les nègres et tout ça veut. Et déterminé. So, the uh, mm -hmm. Crozier, et vous, Kokami, uh, <laughs> 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 le document de la trilatérale du uh, mis, uh, 1973 dit exactement ça. C'est so, fini. On ne peut pas, on doit résister. Il reconnaît la situation comme une situation insupportable du point de vue de développement capitaliste. No one's getting internet here, right? Like, are you, so, so uh, the, Tony's talking about a, 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 a book that was commissioned by this trilateral commission. It was a, a trilateral meaning Europe, US, and Japan, the, the three dominant powers of the non-communist world. And they, they commissioned three authors, one from the US, one from Europe, a Frenchman, and a Japanese author whose name I don't remember. And the book was published as, I, I think it was published as something like The Crisis of Democracy. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first book. Pardon? That was the first book. Okay, good. And so um, Huntington's essay in this, which is mostly about the U.S., says something very interesting. He says that, that, that demo capitalist democracy, or even capital itself, although he doesn't put it this way, can't survive because of the demands of, and it's, and it's, he's like super explicit about this, 
It's not just the demands of, women, of, of workers, it's the freedom demands of African Americans, it's the demands of women, it's the demands, like he, he's saying capitalism can't survive by responding to all these demands. And that's what he says, democracy is sick because, but, but what he means is capitalism, is sick because of all of these social demands that are, and he means the whole chain of them that Tony was talking about in a way. So in some ways Huntington gives the, um, the recognition from the side of power of the proposition that Tony was just giving, that, that, that the kinds of struggles in the real subsumption are not only struggles of factory anymore, but, but a kind of chain articulation of uh, a series of social subjects that struggle together. Pardon? It was 1973, or I'm suspecting 71. But anyway, right, it's right in that early the 70s. Publi the publication of 73. 73, okay. Yeah, but but, but the, the, the description began in 71. 72. Okay. 71. It was published in 1975. Oh, it was published in 1975, okay. Oh, yeah. No, we, maybe. I don't know, yeah, I, I, I trust the internet. <laughs> anyway, the, um, the, early, the, the early 1970s, let's just put it that way. In the same period we're talking about. Mais nous, bon, on a cette, cette après, c'est clair, hein? c'est Thatcher, c'est Reagan, c'est ça, c'est les grands politiques de, qui changent complètement, non, sous les horizons politiques. Mais nous, on n'est pas intéressé à ça pour le moment. On est intéressé plutôt à ce qui est la transformation technologique qui intervient, okay. à ce qui sont les modifications de la composition technique de la classe ouvrière et du capitalisme qui se passe à ce moment-là. Ça veut dire que la technologie est, marche avec la politique, marche avec les rapports de force. La technologie n'est pas neutrale. So, so, at that moment, you know, like, at, at, at beginning in that moment, the late 1970s, we enter the <coughs> neoliberal political composition of capital, but we're not, with Reagan and Thatcher, but we're not going to, we're not yet interested, or Tony wants to be not, not quite focused on that yet, but focus rather on the transformations of the technical composition, the, the technical composition of production, and recognize in some ways that the technical composition and the political composition march together. Ça commence avec l'automation. L'automation des usines. C'est-à-dire, c'est la nouvelle révolution industrielle par laquelle on est présent. Qu'est-ce que c'est l'automation de that, that begins with the autom auto automation of the factories, and, uh, and that, that is in some ways the, uh, a new technological revo industrial revolution. Le travail humain est, il va, est, avait été simplifié au maximum avec les opérations terroristes. Cette simplification maximale du travail humain peut être résumée, transformée dans des engins so the, the, in some ways we could understand automation like this, at least the, the industrial automation, which is that with Taylorism, already in the previous period, human actions in the, in the factory were, were reduced, were simplified to, 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 to a complete degree, like, like Charlie Chaplin moving. He became, the worker becomes a machine in some ways. And that makes it then possible that tailorization, the trans technical transformation of, of labor, makes it possible then for uh, machines or, or digital machines, you know, uh, to then take over human, human, human force in production. Um, Sorry, that was that awkward thing. But I think la digitalisation, c'est un processus lui-même très mm -hmm. progressif. On parle de formes assez assez mécanique, non, assez manuel, de digita digitalisation, pour passer à des formes complètement automatiques. So, so digitalisation and automation was also a progressive thing. So we uh, start from from relatively manual operations to proceed toward um, properly digital, completely dig digitisation of production. Ce processus s'est accompagné avec un autre, un autre énorme modification du travail, qui c'est sa informatisation. So the, this goes hand in hand with another uh, 
great transformation of the technical composition of labor, and that has to do with the with informatization, computerization, <coughs> Computer. informatization. Yeah. Automation de l'usine, mm -hmm. ça signifie quoi? Expulsion des ouvriers. So automation of the factory means the expulsion of the workers or great reduction of the labor force in, 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 in factories. Informatisation du travail, ça signifie quoi? Possibilité de faire travailler la société entière, tout entière. Computerization means the possibility of making the entire society work. On commence avec ceux qui sont les déplacements des productions de la usine automatisée vers l'extérieur. So, so this <coughs> begins in some sense with the uh, geographical displacement of uh, factory production from the dominant centers of the world to peripheral areas. Tertialisation, tertialisation. C'est-à-dire l'absorption dans le processus productif de les éléments troisièmes. Uh-huh. The, the tertiarization, meaning the uh, displacement of Oh, okay. Tertiarization meaning the, the externalization of the work of the factory outside of the factory. Service, la construction de service, générale, la société devient société de service. And increasingly, and increasingly, service becomes a dominant form of production within the dominant. Uh, Tout ça détermine la cassure et la <coughs> destruction, pour ainsi dire, du système salarial. That all that really brings the destruction, or it implies the destruction of the wage system. Le salaire a été lié à un certain nombre d'heures, soit et dans certains lieux. The wage system was, especially in the Fordist period, related to a certain number of hours and to a certain site, the factory. Avec cette expansion sociale de la société, l'élément temporel est désormais réduit à quelque chose d'extrêmement difficile à toucher. And so with this expansion of production outside the factory, this socialization of production, the temporal element, the number of hours, it becomes very fluid and un, difficult to recognize the, the duration of the working day. Et ce qui est l'élément spatial devient la possibilité de mobilité mm -hmm. virtuellement absolue. And, and in, in terms of space or site, um, the, the production, the site of production becomes uh, virtually uh, infinitely generalizable, meaning like it's not like you have to produ produce in the factory anymore. Production, social production, can take place anywhere across the society. De plus en plus, la forme salariale, la forme monétaire du salaire, est précarisée. And increasingly, the the wage relation becomes precarious. Becomes precarious. So precarious here means not guaranteed. Yeah, individual and non guaranteed. Yeah, individual and not guaranteed. Where, whereas the wage, whereas the Fordist wage was collective, organized collectively through trade unions or other work organizations, it was collective and guaranteed. The Fordist worker, the Fordist factory worker, was guaranteed if not for life a certain period. Now this precarious labor in the in the new phase, I, I'll just be right precarious, um, uh, is both individualized not collectively determined wage, and uh, not, guaranteed. not guaranteed, thank you, yeah. Mais la chose la plus intéressante dans ce processus, c'est le fait que le travail qui est réglé par cette révolution industrielle est un, un nouveau travail. And then, for the most interesting thing, or most important thing for the question of technical composition is that this is a new, these are new forms of labor, this is a new technical form of labor that's being developed. C'est un nouveau travail dans le sens que c'est un travail qui devient de plus en plus un travail qui n'est pas manuel, mais qui devient de plus en plus un travail cognitif. 
this becomes this the, the forms of labor become less and less manual and more and more cognitive. Se sati se da dire parentese quand dit ça on dit tous des choses tendancielles. On dit jamais qu'il n'y a plus de travail matériel ou manuel. C'est toujours des choses tendancielles. Ce sont des processus. Donc, ce sont des processus qui signalent, qui marquent une ligne progressive. Dans laquelle, par exemple, le travail cognitif devient de plus en plus important. Ça ne signifie pas qu'il n'existe pas. Ça signifie peut-être, cette fois, que même le travail manuel est cognitivisé. So, so here we're talking about tendential relations, meaning that this is this or, or progressive ones, reading a tendency that is in some ways projecting the future. So to talk about cognitive labor now doesn't mean there's no more manual labor. It means rather that manual labor has to cognitivize, or you could say another way, like the factory increasingly has to informationalize or computerize so that this so that other forms of labor have to take on its characteristics. It, and um, that was more or less it. Anche il lavoro manuale è stato anche il lavoro manuale viene computerizzato. And 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 even manual labor comes becomes completely absorbed within within the new race. Yeah. Uh, so it is important to explain how surplus value is generated in this new mm -hmm. form of uh, labor. Il rapporto, il, la, la, la linea la strutturazione sociale la, sì. la quand on, on, on dit ça, on dit que donc, è, si è trasformato e andrà a essere trasformato in maniera generalizzata attraverso l'automazione e informatisation e computerizzazione l'ensemble du de ce que Marx appelait les processus de travail l'organisation du travail il y a après un problème qui est celui posé maintenant qui est celui de la valorisation c'est à dire de l'organisation de la valorisation qui c'est quelque chose de différent de la Okay, so, so in, this, in this context, with both the automization and the computerization, it, it, we're, we, re, we have to recognize a new, new forms of labor or processes in this. But that's a different question than the processes of valorization, how value is produced in this. You know, so the first, what Tony had been talking about was how the technical composition of labor has been changed, meaning how what people do at work has been changed. That's more or less easy to understand, I think. But, um, and the, so now it's a separate question or from a different, slightly different angle, you have to ask the question about how value is produced and how value is then extracted. In the, nella dans la définition martienne, mm -hmm. le temps de travail était un temps de travail qui était divisé en deux, on peut dire, un temps qui était lié à la reproduction de la force travail et en deuxième lieu c'était le temps qui était arraché par le profit par le sur travail qui se transforme en sur travail. Mm -hmm. So in Marx's in Marx's discussion the classic discussion in the first part of volume one of Capital, Marx uh, divides the working day into two parts and he divides it into a, a part where essentially what the worker produces during the first <coughs> the four hours equals the amount that the workers paid. And so that amount of time goes into reproducing the worker and goes to the worker. The second part of the working day, the remainder part, the value produced during that part of the working day, Marx says, is what's expropriated by the capitalists. So he divide, it's a pedagogical tool, sort of, to divide the working day into two parts. And that's what he says. Avec la socialisation du travail, la socialisation du capital et la socialisation du travail, cette transformation de la cette construction de la plus-value et cette transformation en profit passe à travers la masse monétaire. So in the in this period or in the process of uh, the socialization 
of capital and the socialization of labor, labor too. That valorization process, the, the, the process of the production of surplus value and profit, uh, passes through the relation with money. Like money becomes more central in the extraction of surplus value. C'est la monnaie qui enregistre la quantité de plus value qui est arrachée au processus de travail. Money, money is what uh, marks or recognizes the uh, amount of surplus value that is um, extracted from labor. This is a moment where we could do a little, um, if, there was, if there was any, I, I would think like clarification things. I don't know if that's helpful or, or maybe there's too big, that's, that's too big to ask. Or maybe you could also think like, where the hell are we going? I think what we're going to do is try to work this trajectory up to the present, which yeah. is not that long from now. And then we'll come back to questions about what this relates to the common. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting that the, uh, as we approach the pres present in this socialization of work, the question of the common enters into the scene of, of production ever more clearly. This thing about the socialization, I mean, I think it's a pretty, at least at base, a pretty easy concept he's trying to say, which is that capitalist, the, at least a center of the capitalist production of value was in the factories during a certain period in the dominant parts of the world. There's also one has to do with geographical argument. And that increasingly since the 1960s or 70s, there's still factory production, but the dominant part of value produced is not in the factories. That's what he means by the socialization, that partly in services, but other sorts, other sorts of social production outside of the factory is where a lot of value is produced. That's what we're 